So hello everyone and welcome to the Scientix webinar, the Arctic and Polar Research for Education, Eduartic Program for Secondary Schools. My name is Marina Jimenez and I will moderate this session. With us today we have Agata Kostik, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, she's from the Institute of Field yes. the Polish Academy of Science and she's the coordinator of the Scientix Polish National Contact Point. She has been involved in Scientix since 2014 and now she coordinates two European educational projects, Eduardi, which is an Horizon 2020 project, and Eris Erasmus Plus project. During this seminar, uh, you will get familiar with the Eduardi project and the educational program which is promoted. You will find out more about this, uh, its educational tools, which are specifically designed for teachers to make learning fun. Uh, you, will you will learn also about five main components of Eduartic, which are the online lessons, Polarpedia, Arctic competitions, monitoring system, and the workshops for teachers. Also remember that if you would like to receive a certificate, you will have to fill in our feedback uh, survey, which we'll share at the end of the webinar. And last, my colleague Noel with the Scientist account, she will be helping you with any technical problems you may encounter. So please write to her privately if you experience any difficulties in attending this session. At the end of the session, we will have 15 minutes in which you will be able to address any questions to our experts through the chat. But you can still post them during the whole webinar. That's all from my side, so I will leave the floor to Thank you very much, Marina, for introducing me. Uh, I'm really happy that we may uh, show you some tools that we provide in Eduardic project. Uh, we had also opportunity to conduct some workshops and we will conduct some more in Brussels for European uh, teachers and uh, we are really um, very, um, very happy uh, that uh, we've got this uh, opportunity. Mm. And, um, my name is Agata Gozdzik. I'm uh, coordinating uh, the project on behalf of the whole uh, consortium. But I would like to start with a short introductory video and uh, you will be able to, um, to find more after this video, but just to have uh, the ex ex impression and also to see some beautiful uh, pictures taken in the Arctic. So I will now share with you my screen. The Arctic is a beautiful and unique part of the world, a fascinating and mystical place. The EduArctic Partnership, consisting of six organizations from five European countries, hopes to use interest in the Arctic to encourage European students to pursue careers in the vitally important subjects of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The Arctic is a region filled with opportunity. However, the Arctic needs a well-trained professional workforce with the right scientific and technical skills to help the region grow and prosper in a sustainable way. And what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. The changes currently taking place in the region due to climate change are influencing weather and climate patterns in the rest of the world. Conducting scientific research in the Arctic is necessary to understand how these changes are going to affect our everyday lives. The EduArctic program has five components. The first component is a series of online lessons. These lessons, given by scientists working at Arctic research stations, our virtual classrooms, connecting students directly to scientists who are working on exciting research projects. Next are Arctic competitions. Students and teachers from schools across Europe will be able to win a trip to visit an Arctic research station and take part in the scientific research being carried out there. Teacher trainings are another component of the program. Three different forums will be held across Europe where teachers can learn how to effectively use the tools of the EduArctic program in their classrooms. Then there is the environmental monitoring system, where students and teachers at participating schools will carry out citizen science, collecting data and information about the environment around their school. And finally, there's the Polarpedia, a multilingual encyclopedia that explains polar phenomena and scientific terminology. 
the EduArctic program is available for students and teachers at all European schools. And the tools are freely available thanks to support from the European Commission. Okay, hope you enjoyed uh, this and uh, right now um, I will just explain a little more uh, what uh, you may use in your classroom uh, while, while participating in our project. So the idea of the project is to engage students in STEM subjects. So the project is uh, dedicated to secondary schools in Europe, so for students uh, third 13 year old and older, but sometimes we know that even younger students are also taking part in our online lessons. So this is generally the age that uh, we are trying to target, but we know uh, from the experience that sometimes also younger students may participate and uh, they enjoy the project. Uh, we want to establish link between research and education because we are um, research institutions that are dealing with uh, the Arctic and polar research and we want uh, to make sure that what we do as researchers is also somehow accessible for schools and we may make familiar uh, students uh, familiar to research and scientific world and also to make sure that they know what kind of scientific career they could have and uh, maybe in future they also would be uh, scientists joining our PhD studies and um, also helping to develop uh, polar research. Uh, we are conducting the project in a group of six organizations uh, from five countries. We are leading uh, the project, we are from Poland, from the Institute of Geophysics, Polish Academy of Sciences. Mm, but we also have uh, some partners mainly in Scandinavia. So we have Norwegian partner, we've got a partner from Faroe Islands and from Iceland, and additionally partner in France. So uh, we, we cover European part of the Arctic, but also some institutes are uh, inland. Uh, and we have four stations, uh, research stations, that uh, are participating in the project. Uh, our Polish Polar Station, which is located on uh, Svalbard, on Spitsbergen, the biggest island on Svalbard archipelago, this is the far north uh, scientific um, Polish station that we conduct. And we provide lessons, online lessons, directly from there. And um, the, the other station is Karhol Research Station on Iceland, and uh, this is station dedicated mainly to uh, Aurora Borealis and uh, research conducted uh, to understand how northern lines uh, are evol evolving. Uh, the other institution is uh, Faroe Islands Nature Investigation in Faroe Islands, so a little bit uh, south uh, from uh, the Arctic Circle, but still uh, with a beautiful landscape, uh, amazing geology and um, really breathtaking views. And um, one station in Norway, this is Nibios um, a station that is uh, above the Arctic Circle, so uh, in the Arctic uh, itself. Um, and uh, they are mainly dealing with uh, some biological studies. Um, our project consists of five components. Uh, the most important one, I think, from my perspective, is online lessons, because um, online lessons are available to all um, schools that register for the program. Uh, they are conducted online, so you, the only thing you need is a computer uh, plus internet. Uh, we are using Cisco WebEx. This is a tool quite similar to, um, to the tool that we are using today for the webinar. So it's user-friendly and we are helping to connect uh, if teachers had any problems. Um, and this series of online lessons are dedicated to really various topics. So, Mainly, we are uh, concentrating on the Arctic and polar research, but also 
as we want to encourage students to STEM. Uh, there are a variety of topics that are from natural science. Uh, for instance, we had a lesson of mega thrust earthquakes. So they were not from the Arctic, but in the Arctic we are also uh, conducting some se seismology studies. So therefore, we are able to combine the topics, uh, having this Arctic uh, as an um, attractor to, to have teachers and students on board. Um, such lessons are conducted by scientists uh, working in uh, various places, also from our institute in, uh, in Warsaw, but um, our Polish Polar Station on Svalbard uh, is also a place from where we conduct such lessons. Uh, on our website, I will show you in a moment, um, you may find a calendar of lessons. So anytime you think that uh, there is uh, something that is interesting for you and the date and time suits you, you may just quite quickly enroll for such a lesson. Uh, always remember that time is given in UTC. So, in, in comparing to Brussels time, you need to add uh, two hours uh, at summer time. But you may find also a short uh, online tool to calculate your own time uh, from UTC. Each lesson has a short description, what you may expect, uh, what to prepare. Sometimes we have uh, some worksheets to be printed in advance uh, for students. Um, sometimes we are conducting some online classes using Kahoot tool. Anytime that something is um, necessary to prepare in advance, you will find such, a, such a information in the de description. So, you are just uh, looking at the topic, if it's interesting for you, you go to uh, read the description and then uh, you may see what uh, we'll be expecting uh, from you. Uh, we are also trying to provide as many national classes as possible because we know that English may be a challenge for some students uh, uh, in secondary schools. Therefore, um, if at least 10 schools are interested and if we speak the language uh, which is requested, then we provide also some classes in other languages. Uh, so, for instance, you may see here uh, Venus. Uh, this is um, in French. This um, was in French. Um, but we did also some Polish classes, Romanian classes, um, even Greek one, um, Faroese. Danish. So this is what uh, we may offer. There are some more languages that we speak in the consortium and, um, and sometimes we are just asking our colleagues from other institutions to provide such a lesson as it was for uh, Romanian uh, teachers. So maybe for a moment I will go um, to our website and show you, uh, show you how to navigate there. So, if we go to the main website, this is the main website, you got here a tab program. Uh, so, with the tab program, you go to the main uh, tools of our educational project. And in online lessons, you may see the calendar. Right now, we are uh, almost done. Uh, because the, the school year is ending, but we have some uh, opportunities uh, for tomorrow and uh, next Tuesday. It will be this one in French, this one in Polish. But of course, we will start uh, from September. And you may see that uh, we generally provide really a lot of uh, a lot of lessons. So from time to time, we had even three classes per day. So, big variety of topics and possibilities. And if you want to enroll for such a lesson, we need to take an active one. So, for instance, this uh, about polar bear and penguin. If we want to enroll, we just click on Enroll Now. Then you will be asked to have an account uh, in the um, portal. If you don't, want, don't have one right now, you need to register. This is a quick process. You choose don't have Eduartic account. To fill in all this information, you need to certify that you are uh, an adult uh, 
that uh, you agree on the rules of participation and our data use policy as we are gathering your uh, personal data. You need to conf confirm that you are not a robot uh, with school name. I just would like to show you uh, because sometimes um, some schools uh, reported to us that they had problems. So um, school number one, for instance, and you need to then click on this uh, blue uh, place. And you are registering. I'm, I'm registered, so I don't need to do that twice. So I will just go quickly uh, to log in. And then there is a question if you really want to enroll for this lesson. Is I, if I click yes, then I may see other teachers also enrolled from which countries and uh, some more description. And what is important, here is the link to the lesson. So information for enrolled, you may, this is in Polish, uh, but when you've got in English, uh, you've got this link. And you go and you may join when it's time because it's not yet uh, open so it's um, it's quite easy okay so now I will go back to my presentation um, and share presentation with you okay so the next tool which is useful for instance, if you want to prepare yourself or your students uh, for a lesson, it's Polarpedia. It's an online encyclopedia that uh, is dealing with some terms dedicated to the Arctic, but it's, again, quite wide. So we are not concentrating only on ice and glaciers, but on uh, any phenomena that may uh, occur in the Arctic. So we have nine categories. Each category has uh, terms, different terms, that are prepared for you uh, to be sure that your, um, your lessons uh, will be understandable for, for your students. So for instance, if we have um, some scientific terminology, uh, for instance, Calvin Glacier. This is a, phenomena, um, a phenomenon that uh, Probably this term is not known by students if we are not speaking with scientists dealing with glaciers. So you may check uh, such a term, this is Kelvin, um, you may see some photos or some videos, uh, you may see some related resources, so if we provide any additional scientific uh, literacy you may find it here, and you may check it um, in various languages. So. Um, for some terms, this is quite quite old one, so there is only English and Polish, but um, right now, in many cases, we have uh, six languages, and also some teachers offered help to translate other terms in uh, Greek and Italian, so hopefully quite soon we will have uh, additional translations uh, for Greek and Italian. Um, there was also a contribution from Romanian teachers in proofreading and uh, we have uh, right now um, 40, I think, 40 or 50 um, terms also in Romanian. So if you are interested uh, in, um, in helping us, and I see Teresita here uh, who offered her help uh, to, to translate into Italian, um, this is great because we know that you, re you are really using that uh, and any, uh, any contribution is absolutely very welcome. The other component is uh, Arctic competitions and Arctic competitions, um, we have, have already closed the first edition but the second edition will follow and uh, we, will, uh, we should open uh, the second edition at the end of this year or uh, at the very beginning of 2018. Uh, it's worth uh, participating because we are sending our winners and each year it is six uh, teams, so quite many. 12 people uh, we are sending uh, for an expedition to the Arctic. This year uh, the winners will go to Iceland and to the Faroe Islands. 
and the next year to Norway, northern Norway, and uh, to uh, Svalbard, to our station uh, on Spitsbergen. Uh, what to do to win? <laughs> you need to have, a, or your student rather, should have a very good uh, idea of uh, research or of um, a prototype of uh, some innovation that could be uh, used in the Arctic. So here are the rules. Mm, always uh, you are participating as a team. So team is one student from secondary school and one teacher as a mentor. But if you have uh, more than one very talented uh, uh, student, you may uh, participate in different teams. So you may propose two, three, four uh, projects. Um, there are two categories, uh, innovation project and research project. Research project is uh, for ideas what can be measured or search uh, in the Arctic. So this should be connected uh, with the infrastructure that we are providing in our stations. So during online lessons, you may always ask um, our scientists working in the Arctic what kind of equipment they've got, uh, what kind of research uh, they are conducting, uh, what is feasible there, uh, how far you can go uh, in order to get some probes, for instance. So anything uh, that could be helpful to develop your uh, research project, you may find during online lessons. The other category is innovation project. And this innovation project is an idea how could we help uh, scientists or people living in the Arctic uh, for their better performances. So, um, or for, for their safety, for instance. Um, so this is also useful to know what kind of challenges, um, what kind of challenges uh, they are facing in the Arctic in order to help them to propose something that would be useful and could be used in uh, polar conditions. And there are three types of projects. So one is essay, uh, which is uh, generally a kind of um, information document plus illustrations and pictures. The other is video that uh, shouldn't be longer than five minutes. It could be also an animation. And the third is poster, so it's like um, your original work uh, combining uh, text, illustrations, pictures, infographics, etc. Uh, and uh, what are the stages? So generally we have three stages during the competition. Uh, first you are uh, proposing only a short summary. It's like one page summary, so nothing long. On this basis, we are choosing up to 50 projects that should uh, provide us full information. And the full information this is these three types, essay, video, or poster. And um, after reading that, we have a jury of uh, six, um, from six organizations. Each partner um, is um, reading or, or watching um, uh, materials prepared by students. And then uh, we are Mm, assessing them and we are choosing 12 best uh, ideas and then we are uh, inviting uh, those 12 teams for the online interview so this is an interview with all jury members and um, after such interview it's extremely hard and difficult to choose uh, only six winning teams uh, we finished our um, interviews in April um, and Jiri was really uh, absolutely um, inspired by the project and ideas and it was hard for them to, to choose six um, but we need to because we got uh, 12 places uh, to send um, students and teachers uh, to the Arctic and uh, this year those uh, people are chosen but for the next year uh, you still have uh, opportunity to participate and if you want um, to participate if you register for our project you will be receiving a newsletter uh, each month uh, without holidays uh, period because uh, right now we, we will have a break but uh, uh, on average one once a month uh, you, we are sending a newsletter and anytime we are 
opening any new possibility like uh, registering for workshop, uh, registering for uh, competition, or we are also informing on new online lessons, etc. So um, this is uh, quite easy to find uh, find more. The other option, unfortunately, it's closed now. Um, is a teacher workshop. So we are going to organize three workshops in um, various places. Probably some of you maybe will also join us. Uh, we have chosen already the participants. But if uh, we are still missing some teachers from Slovakia and Czech Republic. So if any of you um, is uh, from this country or no active teachers uh, from uh, Slovakia or Czechia, uh, you may invite them and they may contact us directly um, and still uh, still register and participate. Um, the other uh, thing is monitoring system. This is a proposal for students to conduct some observations or measurements in the uh, close vicinity of the schools. Um, data are uploaded uh, to our website once a week, so this is not uh, very uh, time-consuming and in fact I would like to maybe in a moment I will, I will show you uh, how it works on the portal so this is um, this is the map with some observations you may see that uh, some uh, schools are providing information on here it was temperature but uh, it was from April in fact so you may see that there are quite uh, in quite many cases there are um, low temperature and this is what uh, we should uh, fill in the uh, in the system so we are asking for some actual values uh, meteorological values like a temperature atmospheric precipitation type of precipitation uh, visibility wind force cloud cover we are also uh, asking about some data that could uh, occur within the last week so since the last observation, it's like lightning, um, ice on lakes, ice on rivers, some extreme phenomena and um, some other atmospheric phenomena. Mm. And uh, the last component is um, biotic environment, uh, plants monitoring, insect monitoring and uh, migrating birds. And for insects and birds, the first observation in the year is uh, presented. and um, for plants monitoring, various stages, phenological stages, stages are uh, presented. And now let me show you um, how it looks on, the, on here. Here it is. So we have uh, monitoring. This is a current map that was uh, from last Monday because all observations are provided uh, for Monday. You may also provide it on Tuesday, but it's then a uh, late measurement. You may, on the map, you may choose what kind of information you want to uh, see. So on Monday it was not raining anywhere, for instance. Uh, no lightning. No, of course, no ice on lakes. Uh, but maybe some atmospheric no, atmospheric phenomena were not observed, observed, but we may see wind force, for instance. So we, we may see that different uh, wind force was reported, were reported here. You may, um, you may take, uh, you may report new measurements. For me it's blocked because uh, I we would be able to do that on Monday. Uh, but I may also get the report and this is Excel file with all measurements uh, that was reported uh, from various places, towns and countries um, on all the dates where measurements were taken. So if you want to make any calculations, any averages, some statistics to do, you may use this file and uh, then you know that your, um, your students are working on real data, not uh, different types of numbers, but data that were uh, reported by other schools uh, mm, working in, in the program. 
If you want to my, uh, know more about monitoric systems, I strongly encourage you to, to read this part and there is also a monitoring manual. This is something um, that if you want to make sure that you are reporting properly, uh, then this is a manual with, um, uh, with uh, many pictures that you may see how, uh, how to report. So for instance, if you mm, if you are not sure what means partly cloudy or complete cloud cover this is easy but uh, this is an example you may see information description plus a photo so if you are not sure uh, for instance when to report that um, some plants uh, open their buds for instance you may see here so for each uh, species you've got here short information with also some interesting stories and then all these uh, phenological phases that should be reported. You are reporting only once for plants, birds and insects you are reporting once in the year. For instance when it started to flower, first observation of flower started to flower and then this is off. So then open buds, leaves started coloring, leaves started falling down and all leaves falling down. So different phenological phases could be reported um, once per year when it happened. And here with these um, pictures you may see and with explanations um, you may see how to report if you want to um, do it properly and uh, make sure that you also um, may inform your students on how to observe uh, the nature uh, and report. The reports are done by teachers, not by students them, uh, themselves, but you may always ask your students to provide data and you will be only uh, publishing them uh, on the website. So this is an idea to um, invite students also to be a part and to be engaged in, in this. Uh, we are very proud to have uh, over 440, 60 teachers and uh, we are right now in uh, 36 countries, it's not only Europe, we've got uh, some um, teachers from Asia and Northern and Southern Americas. Um, so this is a big uh, Eduarctic family right now, but of course we, uh, we would like to have more and more. Um, the registration process is uh, really easy, so um, if you have any uh, problems with, uh, with registration, uh, you may also um, maybe I will show you, you may also contact us uh, by having um, there is a, uh, there is this question mark. So this is. Um, question mark right here on at the upper part. If you click on that, you may always contact us. There are also frequently asked questions, quite many of them, and you may choose any topic, any subject and, and send us information. So this is uh, something that could be useful also uh, for you. If you want to see, if you have any questions, you may also go to the main uh, page with uh, frequently asked questions and you may see that all those components uh, which are here in the project uh, there are also here covered by uh, various uh, questions and answers. So hopefully um, you will get your answer uh, without getting to us but if not then we are uh, for your disposal also. And uh, coming back to, um, to the presentation, uh, we have two more um, or three more things. Uh, one is your profile. If you uh, are registered, um, you may uh, always see for what kind of lessons you enrolled. So you don't need to remember or to copy paste uh, the links to, to the website. You may always go uh, and see that. So one more time I will share share my screen with you and um, profile. 
you've got here. As I uh, enrolled for the lesson just uh, a few minutes ago, I may see here all this information. So this is uh, general information, the time is here, and then uh, if I want to enroll, I may enroll here. Here is the link and some information that are useful for me. But I may also see all my lessons that I, I was attending. If they are gray, gray it means that they are already uh, covered and uh, finished. Um, but these coming lessons are at the, at the very top of, of that. Uh, what else you may find here? This is uh, this nice uh, graphic and information that uh, I've got 630 points. These points are so-called edu gain points, and uh, we are encouraging you to take part actively in the project. And we are giving you points for any activity, in fact, that uh, you are conducting here. And how you can get the points? So generally. For online lessons. For each online lesson you are participating, you've got 40 points. If you fill in the survey about the lesson, additional 40 points. Uh, if you are taking part in competitions, then also for each stage you are receiving points. Then for teacher workshops and training, if you participate, you've got points, and for survey, you've got points. Uh, for each observation registered in the monitoring system, you also may get weekly 10 points. When you register, and the registration is very easy because you need to indicate on the map where your school is located. So uh, generally to be sure that on the map your reports will be uh, properly displayed. So this is easy process, but when you, when you do that you will also get uh, and it is done when you want to add your first observation. So in the monitoring system, you click on new measurement, and then for the first time, you will be asked to provide this information. Then for each survey that you are filling in in the system, you are getting points. About survey and evaluation, I will come back to that uh, in a moment. And for each comment you provide on Edu Arctic Forum. And this edu forum is also available when you are uh, logged in. Then you may see that there are some topics, some general uh, message boards about online lessons, Polarpedia, monitoring system, competitions, workshops, other. And uh, there is also forum in Polish, as we've got uh, quite a big number of Polish schools on board. And uh, if you want to share any comment on lessons that uh, were just finished, if you want to ask for some topics that are not yet available, but you would like to have a class on that with your, with your students, if you want to have a um, lesson in your national language, any comment like that you could uh, post uh, here. So generally you may see um, how it how it's work? It's really easy. You are just adding a post uh, here. There are also quite many useful information uh, for the lessons. So so if you one uh, if you once publish a post here, you will be receiving information if anyone also posts it. But you may stop following uh, just uh, here. Okay, and from uh, from your profile, you may also visit a part dedicated to. Mm, evaluation, which are here, and uh, there are some uh, evaluations. Uh, I was not submitting entry skills assessment because I'm not uh, teaching at school, so I don't have student, and this uh, survey is dedicated to student. But for instance, for online online uh, lessons, uh, we may hear see what was submitted, what was not submitted after each lesson, but only in the lesson that uh, I took part, I was receiving uh, online um, lesson survey. And coming back to the, to the surveys, um, coming back to the presentation, Yes. 
to the Edu game poem. I will come. Uh, we will have uh, a few surveys, but the one is uh, important at the very beginning. So when you register, you will be asked to fill in entry skills assessment. It's about your students and about the group that we are working with on STEM skills, on knowledge about science and scientific research, and knowledge about the Arctic. And uh, don't worry, we are not expecting that uh, your students uh, have uh, uh, big knowledge about uh, the Arctic and uh, all, all the components. Uh, but we want to make sure that after the project, after they are participating in different activities provided by the project, um, their skills are improving. So that's why we are doing entry skills assessment and then um, after uh, skills assessment survey. Uh, generally, after registration, you will get the link and email with a reminder. Um, and at the very end of the project, so it will be in uh, March, April, uh, 2019. Uh, we will ask you again the same questions, but uh, hopefully the performance of students will be better than better assessed by you. Uh, we have also some ongoing surveys after each online lesson, after workshop, after taking part in Arctic competitions. Um, you will be also asked to, to fill in the survey, but surveys are not obligatory. So we are extremely happy to have feedback from you. But of course, it's not um, obligatory for you, so if you don't have time but still want to participate in online lessons, then um, we should, uh, then you know, uh, then we may also adjust the project uh, for you, but you are still uh, allowed to participate in other activities, not filling the surveys at all. Uh, we will also have um, some technology and uh, impact survey. Uh, it will be done in January 2018 and uh, then in 2019 again, uh, just to make sure that uh, the project has positive impact as it's funded by uh, public uh, funds from the European Commission. It's important for them also to uh, be sure that they spend money well. And I invite you to the um, project website and to our portal. You may also um, join our followers on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. If you register for the program, you will be uh, getting newsletters. Um, so you don't need to subscribe to newsletter additionally. And there is one slide I, I missed and I will go quickly to, to that. This is about edu game. So, what for are the edu game points? One thing we used edu game classification was for the workshops to um, to be invited because we had much more applications uh, that uh, we could um, uh, grant travel grants. So, therefore, we decided to uh, choose participant on the basis of edu Arctic points and. Uh, mm, but also, we want to uh, have some special awards uh, for the most active teachers. And um, first three teachers with the higher numbers, uh, the higher number of points, will get dedicated lesson from Polish Polar Station or Hornsund or Artstowski Antarctic Station. And you may um, conduct con have it any time you want. So, for instance, if you've got a big ceremony in your school, any kind of scientific picnic, something that uh, you'd like to do as an event, then we are for your uh, disposal. And you may have it uh, like during science uh, picnic or school picnic, anything like that. And it will be done especially for you. Uh, and uh, top 50 teachers and top 10 schools will get special certificates uh, for innovative educators and institutions. And on our website, you may check uh, the current uh, leader boards. Uh, so we are publishing their the most active teachers, schools, uh, towns and countries. So you may check how you are uh, performing. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you very much uh, for your participation. And I see that there are quite many, um, quite many questions. Uh, so uh, I will be now answering them.
Uh, okay, so starting from the very beginning, uh, there will be any possible to go with more than one student. Um, so the, the general idea is that one team is one student plus one teacher. But you may, of course, uh, propose various projects with different students. So then it works like that, that you are proposing three, four applications, and each application go through this procedure, the first summary, then full proposal, and then uh, online interview. And if you manage to, to have uh, two students in the winning teams, then, of course, both of them will go with you. So this is uh, how it works. We had um, this year such a situation uh, from Greece that the project was proposed by a team. It was three or four students working together. But um, as uh, they needed to present only one name of students um, in the application, they have chosen one person and this one person was a uh, representative of the whole group. Uh, what what for should I collect these points? So, Alexandra, I hope I answered this. So, uh, generally, um, you will get these um, dedicated classes, or uh, it was also for workshops. And anytime we are proposing something that space is limited somehow, but because generally with online lessons there are uh, 23 available places per each lesson. Uh, and we are not using EduGame points to, for that. This is only first come, first served. But uh, with some activities which are limited, like grants uh, for travel and hotel for the workshop, we may use this. The other thing is certificates, but believe me, there are quite many teachers very active and also willing to, to get the points and asking us sometimes if something fails with, with the points. Why didn't I receive um, uh, points for, for the online lessons, for instance? So uh, they are quite, uh, quite attractive to, attractive to uh, having these points. Uh, how many points we should have? But Adelaida, please specify uh, because um, yeah, there is no obligation to have points at all. Every time you're active, uh, you're receiving points. But uh, and it depends how active other teachers are also. So, for instance, if we go for a moment uh, to the portal, um, I will show you the leaderboards. So, when you go to EduGain, you may see top five teachers, top five schools, but you may also see the whole list of teachers. So not with the full names due to data, uh, personal data protection, but uh, information uh, from which country they are. So if you see, there are some very, very active uh, teachers, but there is no um, obligation to, to receive uh, and gets collect points. Okay. Um. So thank you, Agatha, uh, for the presentation. It was very informative. Uh, I don't know if there's anyone else who has a question. Um, yes, I see one from Panagiotis. She says, "Is wait, I lost the question." Is there any chance we could invite a scientist to our school for a brief speech from Panagiotis? That, that's the last question I can see here. Um, it depends on the country, because uh, if uh, you are from the country that we have our uh, institutes, our partners there, then we did it, in fact. So we, we had some schools that invited our scientists uh, to the classroom, and uh, we had some um, some lectures for, for them and presentations. Uh, but of course, if you are from the country that uh, we do not have any institution, then then we don't have funds to do that. But we may be uh, with you online if, if you want. So this is um, a kind of virtual uh, visit of our scientists. 
Okay, uh, thanks a lot for uh, asking, uh, sorry, to, for replying to these questions. I don't know if there's any other. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone that you can post it here on the chat. I see some people writing, so maybe we can wait a couple of minutes because we still have uh, mm -hmm. 10 minutes left. So let's see if there's something else coming up. Okay, so you checked um, all this uh, information, yeah, on, on, the, on the chat, yeah, so I don't need to uh, look if there are some questions hidden from the very beginning. Yeah, or no not. worries. We were uh, I was checking throughout the whole throughout the whole webinar and that's, those are the ones that I put on the notes. So if there's any other it should come it should come up now. Oh there is one one question about uh, the trip to the Arctic. So this is uh, that uh, if someone would like to travel to pay additional costs of, of the flights. Um, in such a situation, we we should um, check it uh, uh, by case. So it's not generally we are sending six teams, but uh, if there would be a team of students proposing one project, we could cover um, costs of one student. But maybe if you could cover somehow uh, the rest of costs, maybe it would be possible. But it depends. Uh, it depends on the situation and. Uh, it depends also if we've got um, available places um, in our station because it's normally proposed to researchers from all over the world. So um, if uh, we have six places in Hortund and six in Spanhof, but it may happen that if the team wins and we are able to cover the cost, then if we are only able because we've got three places uh, in the station, uh, we could also invite the rest. So, yeah, I, I think it could work, but of course it's an individual uh, discussion wh when it happens. Uh, it's, it's good to clarify this one because there was uh, some uh, debate going on in the chat whether you, you, how many students could go because uh, people were very interested. It was this one and the question okay. of the points on the website, those two issues, people were a little bit confused, but I think we clarified them now, so that's good. <laughs> Um, let's see. I see people typing, so like, let's see. Just uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, just a reminder. Um, I put here on the notes section that if you want to get the certificate to attending to this webinar, please fill in the survey monkey. It's uh, this is the correct link which was not working before, so um, please uh, click on the one here. Um, there's a there's a a comment from Milorad. He says. Uh, for all who would like to watch and hear this interesting presentation later on, here's the link. Okay. <laughs> we have some very active participants who are already okay. sharing the link. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, I'm not. Okay, there's more people typing. Let's wait. Let's wait a little bit more. Okay. And as I see Milorad here, uh, just a private comment, uh, please uh, let us know if you are attending uh, the workshop in, in Warsaw, because I, I think we still are waiting for your uh, answer and survey. Okay, I think uh, people are just uh, giving positive feedback <laughs> to the presentation, and thank you. So I think we can we can start closing already. Um, so thank you very thank much, you very much, Agatha, for taking the time to present the project and everybody for coming. Uh, we will share the presentation with all the attendees as always. And well, that's all from my side. So uh, we'll see you in the in the next Scientix webinar. And thank you again, Agatha. Thank you, thank you very much, and I hope to meet you all online uh, at some online classes and uh, invite you to, to register Excellent. for the program. Yeah, <laughs> we hope we everyone registers. <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll be closing, and bye to everyone. Bye.